Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to. I guess this will be this will be part of the the road reflection uh, situation uh, series situation series. Let's just say series. Uh, obviously, I'm not on the I'm not I'm not on on the road at the moment, but um, I uh, want to talk about some 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 shit that's happened this morning. Uh, some of it, well, a lot of it's kind of uh, disappointing and. Uh, hopefully I can um, shed some light and clarity. Some of this stuff I'm going to be going through with you guys in the moment. I haven't particularly looked at it either. Um, but I want to start with this. Uh, first of all, I'm a robe guy now. This is this is who I am. Um, I have uh, uh, become part robe. I have uh, transformed into, into just a, but part of me is now uh, as we enter the quarantine um, this is just who I am. I've become part robe. Uh, so I'm half human, half robe. Very comfortable, very comfortable situation to be in. Uh, but, but I am going to I'm going to try to make um, these daily road reflection videos uh, because as of this morning, I have lost uh, more gigs. <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm laughing out of the anxiety and discomfort that I have. But I have um, I will say that that I am uh, genuinely uh thankful for the extra appreciation that I've received like a, a bunch of people have donated um already to um to to help with these videos and stuff like that and and supplement the 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 uh loads of income that I am uh, not going to be getting is sort of, sort of what it is uh so I'm at 6 weeks right now um uh pretty much into mid May uh, is is uh, how long I will not be uh, on the road uh, with my primary source of income. So because of that, um, I am going to uh, do these more. So uh, if you've if you've kind of followed my work and if you are a subscriber uh, to my channel to to my page, then you know that. Um, these are more loose kind of uh, ranty videos, uh, so it's, I'm going to try to do those uh, a little bit more uh, frequently. Uh, I'm going to aim to do them daily, uh, just kind of give you an update about what's going on. So sometimes they, they might be this sort of stuff where I'm going to talk about some current events, give you an update on, on my life, um, you know, with, uh, life within the quarantine. Uh, so, uh, th there might be that, uh, sometimes they might just be some, some random shit that I think is important that we should all kind of be taking into some self care type things. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, uh, I'm not the only one that's lost these gigs, by the way. Uh, I don't want to make it appear that I'm just saying that I'm the only one that's lost a bunch of gigs. Uh, that is 100% not true. Uh, I know a ton of, um, working artists, working musicians, uh, that have, uh, that have lost a lot of work, um, that have to supplement their income in, uh, in other ways, and, um, it sucks, is sort of what I'm trying to say, uh, so at this point, uh, we have to kind of be, be good to each other, and, uh, try to stay positive, and, you know, now now is not the time for hyper reactivity. Um, I think this is the time to practice some stoicism, practice some uh, hyper reactivity to me. And I know I did a video about this a, a little while back. It's it's basically taking that first just huge emotion that we feel and basing all of our actions beyond it. It's very difficult not to do that for a lot of us, especially when we've kind of lived in a society that's kind of built around that. Um, stoicism is kind of looking at that emotion when it when it occurs, saying, "Dab, well, that fucking sucks. Uh, I'm gonna feel this emotion, but I'm gonna f I'm gonna kind of take it uh, for myself. I'm going to I'm going to." absorb the information that's coming towards me. I'm going to feel the emotion, but not um, not base any actions going forward until I can assess what this emotion really is and where it's coming from and um, 
and then kind of make some decisions based on that. Uh, so right now, um, it's super frustrating to lose all these gigs. I mean, it's crazy frustrating uh, to lose all these gigs, especially when, you know, the amount of time that it takes me to plan a tour um, and get out on the road and, you know, promote these gigs and the amount of work that I have to do is um, – is really really difficult. It's a lot of it's a lot of man hours, uh, and I'm the only person that is on my staff. I'm a one man, one man, uh, sole proprietorship, or whatever whatever you want to call it. Uh, so it's just me kind of doing all the stuff. So so it really really sucks, and it affects a lot. Um, but I am overwhelmed by the amount of generosity and kindness that I have received uh, just in the last few days of learning. Uh, that I'm gonna that I'm you know essentially losing losing a lot of work. So thank you to the people that have uh, become patrons, uh, sent these one-time donations, sent any sort of help, uh, downloaded my album, uh, gone to Bandcamp, uh, subscribed to my channel, liked my Facebook page, shared my posts around. Uh, continue or people that are continuing their patronage through this difficult time. Um, so I, I wanted to kind of open up this video by saying thank you and letting you know that, you know, these are going to go to we're, we're going to try to do some daily videos um, and uh, and decipher some news together is, 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 is essentially what I'm going to try to do um, more often and try not to be hyper reactive to things, try to take a measured, thoughtful response to you know things as they're coming to us um at the speed at which they come come at us uh try to engage uh critical thinking in our in our society which is so necessary right i think i think hyper reactivity is another thing where i i think critical thought gets left behind um, because we only have that one emotion, it's it's explosive, and then we just base all of our uh, all of our actions on it. So, um, engaging in, in sort of a critical thought of of news as it comes to us, and and realizing that these are all every video that I make is going to kind of be um, encapsulating this moment in time that we're all kind of stuck in. Uh, so that's that's where we're going with this, um, and I wanted to start. Because uh, today has kind of been a, a, a wobbly, wonky day, and uh, I was kind of hoping that the fires had been put out in terms of gigs and all that sort of stuff, right? Uh, and I wake up and, you know, we had to cancel more gigs, and uh, we there might be one or two shows that I can kind of do online through the, like, live streaming stuff. Um, kind of going going to see how that works uh this evening uh there there is a um a show uh that uh, that in knoxville that that date might um might exist in some capacity but get rescheduled as a live event for for a later date so um you know a lot of things to assess and it was kind of a uh disruptive way to kick off the morning uh, especially when I kind of woke up and I was like, I'm going to do all these things. I'm very excited. I've got, you know, I'm like feeling more motivated, you know, get, getting my motivation back and, you know, trying to, um, trying to get adjusted to this new schedule that I'm, I'm going to have to be in for a little while. And, uh, yeah, so I, um, I, it was a rough start to the day. Uh, and then I saw that Tulsi Gabbard, posted a, a video saying that it's an important message. Uh, and what was this important message? Um, she is suspending her campaign and has endorsed Joe Biden. There's a lot to say in this moment, isn't there? <laughs> uh, look, if you follow my, my channel, if you follow the stuff that I've been saying for, for, for the last like two years, I have a shit ton of videos about Tulsi Gabbard and why I supported her and why I thought she was an important voice in American politics. Um, I am also a big Bernie Sanders supporter. Uh, I, I think that he's an important voice in American politics. But bo both of these people, you know, there's people on both sides of the aisle that will shit on me for supporting the other side. And at this point, I, it doesn't fucking matter. We're, we're in a crisis situation. 
right now, right? And, and I think if we're going to shit on each other um, for w what mascot of an idea we like, uh, it's not particularly helpful. I've, 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 I've made it pretty clear uh, that, that, uh, that that's not where I'm going to go. Same thing with Andrew Yang. Uh, I have I have uh, I made a video about Andrew Yang endorsing Joe Biden too, um, and and I feel like this might end up having a similar outlook uh, to that, um, which you know I got a lot of visceral attacks, uh, where I basically said it doesn't make sense that that uh, that that Andrew Yang would support Joe Biden because Joe Biden doesn't support anything that Andrew Yang would have supported. Um, now, Andrew Yang and I had some differences. Same with Tulsi and I. We, we have some differences. Uh, same with Bernie and I. We have some differences. Um, and that's good. If, you, if you're a supporter of, of these particular candidates, you should be able to objectively disagree with them but still be a supporter. That is important. Um, I think what ends up happening with a lot of people is that we, that there is a level of fanaticism because we are um, we kind of get stuck and we look for these people that kind of encapsulate every single part of our ideas and we aren't objectively able to see them for what they are, uh, which is that they're just people uh, that represent an idea. And they might not represent 100% of all the ideas that we that we believe in because we can't just say we, we're not a hive mind. That's sort of one of the things that uh, is is cool about human beings is that we have a diversity of thought and we can engage in said diversity of thought. Um, now, uh, and and I mean, I got I got people launching into me about Andrew Yang, and uh, you know, I said his flagship thing was universal basic income. And uh, and Joe Biden 100 percent does not support universal basic income. He just doesn't. He's he's a trickle down guy. That's what he is. I mean, a lot of Democrats are trickle down guys. Um, they believe in this old 30 year old fucking. Hey, it, it didn't work 30 years ago, but but maybe it'll work now. Do you th th no. Why would it? N none of the mentalities have changed. What what evidence do you have to, to show us like you know, the definition of insanity is trying the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. It trickle down didn't work when Reagan fucking proposed it or Nixon or any of the other fucking pro-capitalist champions of Western civilization. They all proposed it and they all tried to put it into effect and it didn't fucking work. It just doesn't work. That's an acceptance that, that these people have to fucking come to is that it doesn't fucking work. It's never worked. Right. So for for a long time, uh, Dr. Richard Wolf, uh, there's a guy by the name of Nick Hanauer that's proposed this middle out to bottom up kind of economy. And at this point, that's what we need to see. Right. So so we have this thing, this UBI, uh, Tulsi Gabbard just put an emergency resolution in place um, to support uh, the idea of UBI. In, in, uh, in our society because we need it, right? We need it now more than ever, um, and Trump is, is going to do it. And Joe Biden was basically like, nah, we should let the insurance companies decide uh, how to move forward with this crisis. Well, guess what? The insurance companies are going to try to turn a profit on a situation that we shouldn't be trying to turn a profit over. Um, he voted for the Iraq War, so now, so now let's get to let's get to Tulsi's endorsement. Uh, I don't agree with it, <laughs> but, but I'm, I'm incredibly fucking disappointed in the fact that she has endorsed Joe Biden, the the DNC corporate candidate that they are shoving down our throats. They are stealing the election again. That's what they've uh, they've done. That's what they. I mean, they're 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 basically. I mean, there's Lee Camp pointed out this in a, in a different video of his that there are 44 USBs with uncounted votes in Dallas County alone. Holy fucking shit! You know we don't have paper ballots, I and mean, th this guy is not doing well. Joe Biden is not doing okay. His record is not a progressive record. It's a Republican record. That's what it is. So it's very – my initial reaction this morning when I saw that she was suspending her campaign, okay, uh, the campaign 
can be suspended, you know. Uh, I was hoping that there would be more uh, support behind Tulsi uh, when it came into the primaries. And, uh, and once we started getting into the voting, um, to see how, uh, to see the New Hampshire results was a little disappointing. Um, I think she got like 1% or something like that. For how much she campaigned in, in New Hampshire, uh, my assumption was that she would get a little bit higher. Um, so, you know, I'm not sure what happened, uh, but it was a bummer. It was a bummer regardless, you know, uh, and, uh, so then I kind of was just like, I don't know if she's going to get a whole lot, of, uh, a whole lot of votes, but I think she's going to stay in the campaign to possibly try to direct the narrative, um, further left, possibly, um, you know. I think the way that she talks, uh, she has a very diplomatic way of speaking. I like that about her. Um, now to counter that with uh, Bernie, I think Bernie has a very direct way of talking. Uh, it's not it's not as diplomatic, in my opinion, as Tulsi. But I kind of like that about Bernie too, right? Like, because sometimes we just need the straight up fucking direct approach of hey there's a motherfucking pandemic you idiots you shouldn't be running a fucking primary right now right like that i feel like we kind of need that sometimes and then you know once people hear that and they go well p p i mean how dare he swore oh what well, how uncouth of him how uncouth and then you can kind of have tulsi gabbard come in and be like guys you know people are suffering right now we need people to stay in do you really think hundreds and thousands of people going to a poll to vote? Democracy can wait. You're, you know, democracy depends on people. Uh, and if you don't have people, and if you're not going to take care of people, then you don't have a democracy to run. Even if you're stealing the election. It's just something logical to think about. So I think, I think they're both important, right? Um... Balance, I think, is what uh, both of these progressive, in my opinion, progressive candidates come to. I know there's going to be a lot of people that disagree with me that Tulsi's not very progressive or Bernie's not very progressive. You know, they're, they're going to come at me from, from either direction. Um, I am disappointed in Tulsi's uh, endorsement of Joe Biden. And, uh, um, but here's the thing is you don't have to agree 100 percent with these candidates. And this is something that I do disagree with. So as I talked about with Andrew Yang, that his flagship, uh, flagship um, policy was universal basic income, Tulsi's flagship policy was uh, taking down the military industrial complex, that the domestic uh, and the foreign are intertwined with each other. I agree with that. Um, I think having an anti-war voice in, uh, in American politics, especially now, is so important. Um, and she was barred from the debates. She was barred and completely blacked out. And uh, look, you know, I've had a lot of conversations with my with my uh, pro Bernie friends um, that kind of want to make you choose one or the other. Um, and this is why it's like, yeah, you know, I'm I'm part of this democratic process now I, I, as an American citizen and stuff, and I kind of hate it even more that we're that we're made to choose. Even down in the primaries, when it comes down to the progressives, we're, we're down only to choose between one or the other. Like, it ha like you, can't, you can't throw your support in with, with other, you know, uh, potentially progressive uh, politicians that believe in these, potentially, these, these progressive ideologies. Um, it's kind of a bummer. But Tulsi's flagship thing was anti-war. Uh, anti-regime change wars, taking taking the you know uh, making the military industrial complex more accountable for what they're doing, decreasing the military budget, that sort of stuff, and that and that is being that that was her flagship f flagship. I keep saying it, flagship um, policy. Um, that's kind of what got her barred from um, from from corporate media. They they blacked her out completely. Uh, especially after Hillary Clinton came out and called her a Russian and tried to uh, reignite the flames of McCarthyism that even Dwight Eisenhower was like, hey, this is a bad idea, don't fucking do it. 
um, and that failed, uh, you know, they, they just blacked her out completely. They were just like, this isn't going to work. Pe- people, people don't seem to, um, people don't seem to be buying into it anymore. So, uh, she got blacked out of the media because of that. Now, Joe Biden, um, Joe Biden voted for the Iraq war. I mean, this dude wants to bomb the shit out of countries. It's, you know, it's what he does. That's, that's his thing. He's, I mean, he's a Republican. Um, he hasn't come out and been like, I made a mistake in O2. Uh, he keeps coming out and being like, I'm proud of my record, I'm proud of my record, I'm proud of my record. Well, can you accept that you made a mistake on your record? No, he can't, because Joe Biden is another representation of American hubris. Uh, Tulsi and Bernie, um, they're not. Tulsi has apologized for, you know, believing in what she believed in um, as an adolescent, uh, in terms of the LGBTQ community um, and not having the understanding. That's all part of life, right? We grow, we learn, we adapt, and we go, oh, that shit I believed 10 years ago was crazy. I can't believe I believe that sort of stuff. You know, I didn't have the knowledge I do now. I didn't have the experience I do now. Um, I'm so sorry if, if I hurt anybody because of those belief systems that wasn't my, uh, my intent. Here's a bunch of legislation that I will put into put into place and pass, which she has, um, regarding the LGBTQ community and protecting them so that they're so that they can't be fired, uh, you know, because because they're members of the LGBTQ community. Bernie Sanders did the same thing. I think uh, Bernie said that uh, he he fucked up in voting for uh, for a war. I think the only time that he actually voted for. Uh, an offensive measure, and he said the only person that had it right was my friend Barbara Lee. So both of them have apologized and understood that, you know, and, and kind of shown that they are human beings that are flawed, just like every single one of us, and not these sort of uh, authoritarian godlike figures that we should be um, bowing to every single word that they say. That's what Joe Biden wants. So Tulsi's endorsement of Joe Biden is somebody that, that is authoritarian, pro-war, uh, that talked down to a U.N. weapons inspector. Like, this is not... So it's very confusing as to why you would do it. Now, the first thought is perhaps she's trying to buy for a candidate, uh, a cabinet position. And uh, that was my thought with Andrew Yang as well is they're both vying for a cabinet position. You know, kind of being like, we, we're going to need to push this cat further to the left. I mean, especially now, if Joe Biden is not going to, if the Democratic Party and the Democratic establishment has not figured out that they need to veer further into the left, uh, yeah, they're going to fucking lose in November. Because Trump is sending out checks. Trump is ready to fucking, you know, head into this UBI territory. That is going to get him reelected. Like, he's going to secure his reelection, especially if you're going to run against someone like Joe Biden, uh, who is, you know, status quo, staunch Republican, trickle-down economics guy. So, I... um. I am disappointed in this. Very disappointed in this. Here's what I will say, and then I want uh, there. There's one other thing that I want to read that I think was probably going to shine a little bit more light in in regards to what's happening. Is um, the movement doesn't end with these with just one person. Tulsi's out of the race, but what Tulsi stands for, uh, her anti-war stances. Um, her idea for Medicare for All, which is the Australian model, which would still mean that everybody signs up for Medicare for All. And if you want, um, you know, like plastic surgery or want to pick a specific doctor or what have you, then you can uh, do that by purchasing your own insurance, right? Like, so, but everybody gets this 
this universal in like healthcare system, this Medicare for all. Everybody signs up for it. That was her plan. All of these things we can still fight for. So if you're if you're a Tulsi Gabbard supporter, um, the fight's not over. What what Tulsi stood for uh, just falls on us now. We become the emissaries of what she was fighting for. We become the emissary of the anti-war voice. We become the emissaries of Medicare for all. We become the emissaries of standing up against big banks, standing with our LGBTQ brothers and sisters. We become the voices for it. The people have always been that voice. You know, everybody else that, that we that, that these politicians that we put our our votes and um, our donations and thoughts into, they're, they're just sort of mascots for the idea. That's what Bernie Sanders is, too. I mean, that's the definition of, of, of what his campaign means, right? The not, uh, not me, us. Uh, that means that if the Democrats, as they have done, fuck him out of the primaries again, the movement still keeps going. So that's, that's what we need to keep doing. The movement keeps going. The movement's not going to end. That's crazy. <laughs> Why would you end the movement? Because your mascot's done. It's just, it's just completely mind-boggling to me. And especially now, I mean, we're seeing the, the failures of, a, um, of an unfettered capitalistic system. And, and look at what's happening is, is we're all coming together. You know, like I mentioned at the at the top of this this video is the overwhelming amount of generosity that I've received just over the last few days has been amazing. And I'm, I'm a nothing and a nobody. There's very few people that know who I am. And, and, and for the very few people that do know who I am that follow my work, I am incredibly grateful for. So the movement doesn't end. Right. We can still be anti-war. We can still be for UBI. We can still be for, um, you know, Medicare for all and making sure that our education system is properly funded for critical thought, for religious freedoms, for separation of church and state. All of these things that, that both Bernie and Tulsi uh, combined stood for, we still do that. The, the fight doesn't end with them. And, and before we move to the, the, what I want to get to with uh, Michael Tracy um, and, and, and sort of that end of things is, uh, look, the people that are in the Bernie camp, my fellow Bernie supporters, uh, please don't get shitty with each other, please. Uh, I don't want to see it on Twitter. Okay, I don't want to see it on Facebook in the comment sections and in, in the comment sections of this video. If you don't have anything nice to say, just don't fucking say it. At this point, we, what is the purpose of you get, uh, shitting on somebody? Um, you know, uh, look, we, we felt a lot of pain uh, in 2016 when Bernie Sanders endorsed Hillary Clinton. Um, to which she was like, well, he hurt me by taking too long. Who, but fuck you. You hurt yourself, Hillary, by being who you are. Uh, so I don't know what the future is going to hold. Um, I think we can make conjectures. Uh, but um, my conjecture will be that if Bernie might drop out. And there's a lot to say. Look, we're, we're, we shouldn't even be holding primary elections right now. All of that shit should be on hold. But the DNC wants to do it because they want to coronate this dementia patient so that the deep state and the military industrial complex can have a fucking stranglehold and use this mascot to drive a whole bunch of people to be like, centrism means bombing Iran or whatever the fuck. So I think right now... Uh, and, and, you know, I tried to, I try not to do this. I was kind of objective about um, people like Elizabeth Warren and Andrew Yang. I, you know, it's, it's become very difficult for me to trust what this person says. And with Tulsi, it's, I want to, I want to continue trusting her. But yeah, I think it's going to be a little difficult now with this decision, especially because Tulsi Gabbard was the only person that supported Bernie Sanders in 2016. So to kind of go and flip the position, possibly for a, for a cabinet position, ugh, it's very difficult to, to, to justify it. Um, you know, like, even if she gets picked as the VP candidate, 
I would be a little skeptical. Because is she going to... Is she going to push for those anti-war platforms for more common sense, you know, d foreign policies that field into more common sense domestic policy? I said this uh, in August last year, I think, is the first time that I vocalized this idea. Uh, but I do think um, that every single person that was on that Democratic stage, al almost every single person on the Democratic stage, uh, would be good in some kind of a cabinet position, right? I think Tulsi is very good with foreign policy and her anti-war stances. Um, I, I disagree with her drone policies, but she voted against the Patriot Act and FISA because it, she doesn't believe that's what we need to do. You know, spending that much money on military is not that good of an idea. A standing defense military seems like it's a be much better idea. Bernie Sanders would be great on healthcare. Uh, great on worker rights because he's been advocating for this sort of shit for fucking 40 years. You know, Andrew Yang sees what's going on with automation and UBI, so maybe he would be good in labor, you know, working in tandem with Bernie Sanders because all of these things kind of fit in together. You know, Elizabeth Warren did hold the banks accountable, so perhaps that's something you can put her in charge of. So everybody kind of had um, something, you know, in play and... Maybe that's what happens. Um, you you kind of have this, boy, Joe Biden needs to sit down. Uh, you know, he's just not doing well. He's just not doing well. Um, so, you know, maybe that happens. I don't know. Disapp I'm very disappointed in it. Uh because I don't know what Joe Biden would be good at. And I said that before, too. I mean, Marion Williamson even had a, a Department of uh, Child Care. Uh, astounding that we don't have something like that in place, right? Greatest country in the world, and we don't know how to take care of our children. I mean, we don't know how to take care of shit. I think this pandemic has kind of shown us that, you know. We don't have a, a way to help take care of sick people. We don't have a plan in place for crises, uh, we see this every year whenever there's a hurricane. We don't know what the fuck to do because we don't put plans in place. We're just like, it'll never happen to us. We're America. Have you seen the size of our balls? I mean, that's going to push any hurricane or any sort of virus away. Okay, that's just what we do. When it's like, n no, it's uh, get, nature doesn't give a shit about your balls. Put them away. Figure out a plan. Come up with some preventative measures. And Bernie has come up with preventative measures. Um, he outlined it on his website. Tulsi's emergency UBI situation, that should be something that you should put into effect uh, any sort of time that you see any, any kind of crisis, right? We should have some sort of preventative um, emergency plan, uh, and we don't. And that's proving it to us right now. And Joe Biden wants to keep it that way. Status quo guy, right? Um, I don't think he's very qualified. I don't think he's electable. I don't think he's doing well. Um, I think he is uh, he's having some very, very serious cognitive issues. Um, and I think uh, I do think that anybody that's endorsing him, it's ir irresponsible to endorse uh, someone like him. And uh, I really, really wish I mean, Marion Williamson endorsed Bernie Sanders. I really, really wish Tulsi and Andrew Yang would have gone down that direction. I really do. Um, you know, and we'll see what happens in, in the in the coming weeks. Like I said, I, I, I think, uh, okay, let's move away from the mascots and uh, and really focus on the ideas. That's what I'm more interested in. You know, uh, that's the, any t I have a lot of friends that supported Elizabeth Warren. And, um, you know, when, when she dropped out of the campaign, I wasn't like nanny nanny boo boo and tried to make fun of them and do shit on them or anything. It was like, okay, that sucks. But, you know, well, the revolution keeps going. You know, we're, we're still going to fight for a better system. We're still going to fight for uh, all of the things. Let's talk about the ideas. What ideas do you believe in? Are they that fundamentally different? Where, are we, where, are we, where do we differ in the execution of these ideas? Let's talk about it. Um, and I think that's what we need to do now, right? Uh, so, so Bernie supporters, um, please don't get shitty <laughs> to each other. Uh, and Tulsi supporters, please don't be shitty to, to your fellow Bernie supporters. 
try to try to have an engaging conversation about what ideas do you believe in? Medicare for all? How do you want to execute that? Oh, that way? Yeah, me too. But have you thought about this? Maybe this is something that we haven't taken into account. Have you asked this question before? Do you have an answer to figuring out this question? I'm a little nervous about this aspect of it. I don't know. Um, you know, let's engage each other in discussions like that. That seems to be a little bit smarter to do. Um, now, uh, I do want to uh, to to read the series of tweets that Michael Tracy put out. I got to meet Michael Tracy back in February. I attended a Tulsi Town Hall, and I got to meet Tulsi Gabbard as well, um, which is part of the reason why it's like I, you know, from everything that you were saying, from everything that she that she talked about, um, and I do want to work on a piece about this, and maybe I'll talk about this in a video at some point as well as writing something about it. Um, you know, I've kind of put that. Things were stressful, <laughs> as you can imagine. So I haven't really gotten to uh, to putting that forward. And I do want to talk about meeting Tulsi Gabbard and Michael Tracy and going to that town hall and, and seeing what I did and, and learning and understanding um, what I got out of that. Perhaps perhaps that might be the next video that I do. Perhaps tomorrow, um, you know, unless something insane happens, I will talk about that. That will be something that I can... Uh, I can talk about as well and, and write a piece surrounding it and, and all that stuff. So so I got some homework. I got some work I can do for tomorrow. That's good. That's uh, going to keep my head in check and not spiral me out uh, into uh, yelling obscenities into the sky. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I got to meet Michael Tracy. Uh, we had a nice conversation. Uh, got to take a photo. He tweeted about me, which was also super fucking cool. Um, very interesting cat, uh, I gotta say. Uh, again, not somebody that I agree with 100% of the time, but that's good because now we can engage in, in some diversity of thought. Now we can engage in some, in some discussions and, and I can expand my uh, horizons and he can possibly expand his. I don't know. You know we'll, we'll, that's the exciting thing about differences is that you get to learn something new. You, you don't have to agree with it, but you can go, you know what, I don't agree with that, but it's, it's cool to know that you think this way. This is the thought that exists. And perhaps now I have a better way of saying, hey, I know you're scared about this thing, but have you thought about this other thing? Rather than coming in and, and just uh, calling each other cunts, you know, that's not going to do anybody any good. Uh, so here, let's, let's read through some of Michael Tracy's tweets. Um, I have been trying to figure out how to share my screen for uh, about 25 minutes before I started recording this video. I don't know how to do that yet. Uh, so I'm going to learn some new software. <laughs> Uh, and hopefully be able to share screens um, going forward. So uh, let's. I'm so right now. I'm just going to read uh, what Michael Tracy is saying. So uh, he the first tweet is uh, Tulsi suspending her campaign. She always said she'd support uh, the eventual Dem nominee, even though many refuse to believe her, and the nominee is going to be Biden. Uh, the primary is functionally over. Due to the coronavirus, she must prepare to activate as National Guard. Now, uh, that second part, my I, until he tweeted that, I didn't even consider that. Um, and I think that's 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 a very important reason that she might have suspended her campaign. Had that not happened, I feel like she probably would have gone all the way to the convention. Um, you know. Uh, Again, for someone that it's th that um, the endorsement aspect of it still kind of confuses the shit out of me um, and is very, very disappointing to me. Um, and but the activation of the National Guard does make sense as to suspending her campaign. I can't argue with her on that. She, she her whole thing is service above self. Right. So. Um, I think that's that's important, and I, and and that's a quality that I, I do I do admire about her is that she does put others in front of herself sometimes, and you know, again, this is something people will probably disagree with me on, but but I genuinely think that's a that's a good thing, um, that that she does. So uh, as as we move forward, I although and again, it's like for somebody that fucking supported Bernie Sanders, the anti-establishment, the anti-DNC candidate in 2016, to go and support the DNC candidate um, now kind of just doesn't it, – it doesn't add up. It's the do not compute moment in my head. Uh, so the second tweet, uh, 
Uh, Tulsi said earlier this week, rightly, that the primary should no longer be held due to the public health threat. She therefore could not, in good conscience, continue actively campaigning. There's a huge amount of emergency work for her to do in Congress and potentially the military. Uh, 100%. Absolutely. Those fucking primaries should not have even happened. The DNC forced those votes. Everybody was like, stay in. Don't go out. And the bars and restaurants are shutting down. The DNC was like, yeah, but we got to get our guy in. We got to pretend this democracy fucking matters, right? Because if we just magically put Joe Biden in without anybody casting any votes, it's going to kind of seem a little fishy. Uh, and it's like, yeah, no shit. We already fucking know that you're stealing the election. I mean, we were going to fight for it, but right now there's a public health crisis and maybe you should, maybe Tom Perez should shut the fuck up, sit down, and quarantine himself like everybody else, you know? So, I, I mean, I, I wholeheartedly agree, and, I'm, and I believe Bernie put out the same statement. Bernie put out that there's there, that he's, he's he hasn't come out and said that he's suspending his campaign. Uh, it might be on hiatus, as it fucking should be. Uh, we have taken no measures to figure it out. Bernie Sanders came out with, with like, a point-by-point -point plan. Tulsi Gabbard and Andrew Yang are the only people that came up with a way to financially take care of people during this time. Donald Trump is sending out checks. What the fuck is Joe Biden do even doing? I don't know, which is why this fucking endorsement doesn't make any goddamn sense to me. <laughs> okay. Continuing onward. Tulsi previously said that she would continue uh, all the way to the convention, and her campaign was set up to do that. But obviously, the coronavirus cal crisis changed her cal calculus, uh, just as it has for a huge variety of other aspects of American life. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're, we're seeing that everywhere, right? Um, uh, retail workers, service workers, hourly workers, gig economy people— um, full-time artists, full all independent venue owners, they're all getting screwed out of this thing. So, yeah, I'm, I'm very certain that a campaign that's run by us, uh, another grassroots effort, right? And the same thing with Bernie, Bernie's campaign is it's, it's a campaign that's not getting corporate donations, is not being helped by Wall Street uh, and the banking industry and the fucking oil industry. Um, it's, it's being helped by us, and right now we are in a point of struggling. And... Uh, so that's that's 100% going to change things. So let's keep reading, right? Um, this is not an unequivocal, uncritical endorsement of Biden. It's a fulfillment of her longstanding pledge to support the ultimate Dem nominee. Despite wide pr widespread ascriptions of malicious intent, she was never running third party or a stealth Trump backer. She opposes Trump, which she does. Uh, she has called out Trump a fuck ton of times, right? Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure she said that by selling weapons to Saudi Arabia, we've become Saudi Arabia's bitch. We're basically, like, loaning him our military and stuff. Um, th those were all things that she said. <laughs> you know, like, why would you... So it 100% makes sense that she would um, she would do that. Absolutely. Why? I mean, she's, she's definitely against Trump. She ran against... She's, she was running to run against him. That doesn't make any fucking sense why anybody would be like, she's a stealth Trumpy puppet or whatever the fuck they want to, whatever thing they need to make up. Because they're like, no, not somebody that's anti-war and pro-people. They, they can't actually be any of those things. That's crazy. There can't be people that don't support the fucking astronomical amount of funds we send to the military and fuck over poor people in this country and use them as cannon fodder. No, that's that's crazy Russia Trump talk right there. That's that's what that is. It's not like there's not a fucking history of anti-war activists in this country that have constantly fought against this shit. And every time somebody comes out and actually makes a dent in the anti-war narrative, they get axed. Martin Luther King Jr., the Black Panther Party, fucking anybody in the 60s. If hippies were thrown in under the bus uh, for being anti-war by calling them drug addicts, oh, no. And now you have all the shit that the hippies were smoking back in the 60s is totally legal and is essential business operations now. Cannabis stores are staying open. So, yeah, guess what? Fucking Nixon was wrong. Anybody that believed the same shit that Nixon, you guys were wrong, too. And it's okay to be wrong. Welcome to the fucking party. We have an edible... We're all going to chill the fuck out. 
Uh, okay. As, as we continue to move on. Uh, I'm not happy about Joe Biden being the Democratic nominee. Neither is she. Biden's record is terrible in countless respects. The systemic failures which led to Biden being in a position to secure the nomination will have to be examined for months and years to come. Agreed. Yes. Yeah, ab absolutely, Mr. Michael Tracy. You are, you are correct. I think we are going to have to investigate what the fuck happened within the Democratic Party, not just in this election, but also in the last election. How they actually jack up the fucking uh, campaigns, how they how they steal these nominations. That's what and, and that's what they're that's what they're doing. And I think that should be put under uh, scrutiny. It should all, all, also the Republican Party should be put under, under scrutiny. We should be looking at uh, cross check. Um, that's something that they fucking do uh, in the generals is uh, uh, interstate cross check. Uh, they they knock people out of you know knock people's votes out because they have the same last name in two different states. Um, so, you know, absolutely. Uh, I know many Tulsi supporters will be upset by her decision, but again, she has always said she was going to do this. A horrible confluence of circumstances, uh, principally the pandemic, simply accelerated the decision to earlier than originally planned. Um, yeah, but she, I don't... You can value that principle, I think, but I think what would have been more principled than just kind of towing the line of the democratic establishment, which she has been uh, against on a repeated basis, right? Uh, for someone to criticize the DNC for the, the way that she has criticized the DNC, calling out election interference, the way that she has called out election interference, to call out the Democratic Party for the, being the party of war, as well as the Republicans, the way that she has. Endorsing the status quo candidate does not make any sense. Um, I, I really do wish that she would have put her backing and support uh, into Bernie Sanders. And, you know, uh, much like when Bernie had to endorse Hillary, we were just like, is Jane Sanders OK? Holy shit. Did Hillary Clinton threaten the life of Jane Sanders? And I'm not fully convinced that she didn't, right? Like, I, I, it, it, all of these things just seem really odd, to, especially to people that are political outsiders that don't play that political game. So, so all of a sudden, when it comes down to it, why would you do that? And I'm sure there's other people that are just like, well, she was a snake in the grass. She was a snake in the grass. So was Andrew Yang. They're all snakes in the grass, blah, 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 except for Bernie. Bernie's are. Our, our shining star in the sky, our, our, our diamond in the rough, you know, and, and look, what's going to happen if Bernie supports Joe Biden? Bernie supporters are going to have to eat their words. So let's fucking play this cool, right? I am 100 percent fucking disappointed in this endorsement of Joe Biden. It does not make any logical or reasonable sense to me, even if she said, right, that she's going to back the Democratic nominee. Um, principally speaking, he does not stand for any of the issues listed on her website, any of the issues that she has constantly spoke out against. And I know I'm saying this over and over again, but I really kind of want that to stick. Uh, but we do. We don't have to fucking stand by Biden, right, as supporters. We don't have to stand by that dude. Um, I'm not going to. Sorry. Uh, we got two more tweets. Okay. Uh, Tulsi ran a principled, courageous campaign despite shockingly malign treatment from the media and other Dems. Both Biden and Bernie could have defended her much more but didn't. One key motive for her campaign was to defeat Trump, who she believes is uh, dangerously unfit. Honestly, I'll never forgive the despicable way she was treated, how she was condescended to and dismissed and portrayed as evil foreign agent and so on and so on. She will always be a Democrat. That's just the reality. Uh, and so she's supporting the Dem nominee, despite strong reservations. Uh, yeah, I do wish that there would have been a little bit more vocal support um, from Bernie. You know, uh, he did come out and um, back her up when there was all of those talks of McCarthyism um, from the Clinton campaign. So I do, I do think that 
you know, there could have been there could have been a little bit more. Uh, I think whenever she was barred from the debate stage, Bernie could have been like, this is not OK. Uh, yeah. Um, again, you know, I talked about this in a different video, but regardless of what you think of Tulsi. Censoring a political candidate's voice because you don't like them. Um, even though they met the qualifications that they needed to meet, and then two days before the debate you changed the rules, yeah, we shouldn't fucking be cool with that. Uh, the DNC has done a lot of things that I think um, deserve our scrutiny, um, and and we should be uh, we should be coming at with uh, some investigative lenses. You know, we should be looking at and and. and a good friend of mine, Jay Jackson, this is way back uh, last year, I think last August too, uh, we were having a discussion about Tulsi and Elizabeth Warren. And, you know, he knows that I'm a Tulsi supporter um, and, uh, and he knows that I'm a Bernie supporter and Jay's a Bernie supporter as well, but decided to back Elizabeth Warren. We have differences in what mascot we chose. Fine. Uh, but Jay and I believe in virtually the same, same things. Uh, but Jay pointed out, you know, um, she stepped down from the DNC and I said, that's a, that's a bold move. And I, and I like that move. I, I supported that decision that she made because the DNC is a corrupt organization that is, uh, you know, um, stealing our elections away from us and give, and taking the, taking real choice and not listening to the voice of the people. Uh, and he agreed with that. And, and Jay also looked at me and said, you know, I think if she would have stayed in the DNC, perhaps she could have done some good. Perhaps she could have changed the way that the DNC was uh, was operating. Perhaps instead of Tom Perez, we would have had Tulsi Gabbard, uh, who might have called for um, more transparent, uh, more election transparency, uh, paper ballots, things of that sort, so that uh, so that there's less election interference, there, especially during the Democratic primaries. Right? It's a valid point, I think. Um, you know, I, would she have succeeded? I don't know. It's it's sort of the hypothetical of the situation, right? Um, we can go back and forth on on why she would or would not have succeeded, uh, based on the different ways that she could have made a play made a play. But uh, no one predicted the the coronavirus was going to show up in February. Uh, so, <laughs> but I do think it's a valid argument. Some some, if I was to give her the benefit of the doubt. Right. And it's the same thing with Andrew Yang is if I'm going to give Andrew Yang the benefit of the doubt, perhaps, uh, you know, um, they both are uh, hoping that they wind up in some sort of cabinet position and can make a difference. Can take their universal basic income idea uh, or their anti-war stances and apply it to this neoliberal regime that we are going to possibly be under. Um I don't know. I will say that it's disappointing. Uh, and, you know, I wish that she would have stuck more by the principle of uh, what she ran her campaign on um, and endorsed the candidate that's, that's far closer to believing what she believes in, uh, which is Bernie Sanders. I really wish that she would have endorsed Bernie. Um, I do think a lot of Tulsi supporters are probably going to go, you know, by by Bernie's side. Uh, I I am. Uh, that's the I mean that's I've there's I've I've said this from the start is the the only two candidates I f think are worth voting for are Bernie Sanders and Tulsi Gabbard. Everybody else I didn't find, uh, you know, I didn't I didn't they they didn't make me want to vote for them, and that's what we should be looking for is a candidate that we want to vote for. Uh, very important uh, to, to find that candidate. So, uh, yeah, I'm upset. You know, it's upsetting news. It's what it is. But uh, let's let's see how things go as as they uh, as they go along. Let's not forget that this movement is still alive. We're all upset. We're all sad. Uh, let's not be shitty to each other. Um, you know, let's let's try to engage in some in, in, in some rational discourse. Let's talk about why we supported each other's candidates. Let's talk about the ideas that, that we as people do support, uh, positives and negatives about it. That's what we need in this time of, uh, time of need. 
Um, and I encourage, um, I encourage um, all of my fellow Tulsi supporters, uh, all of my fellow Bernie supporters, all of uh, my friends that want to support Elizabeth, that, that did support Elizabeth Warren, um, that are, for whatever reason, supporting Joe Biden, to engage in discourse um, in a non-insulting manner. Let's, let's, let's do it that way. Um, let's not insult each other. Um, that's my, you know, little goal to take away from all this. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm disappointed. We'll see what happens. Uh, okay, let's, let's bring this video to a, to a close. I gotta make some lunch. That's my plan. Uh, make some lunch, watch some Star Trek Next Generation, uh, and then, uh, I'm working on the podcast. Uh, I'm working on Taboo Table Talk as well today, so, uh, stay tuned for, for that, um, and uh, if you want to continue supporting what I'm doing, like I said, there's been an outpour of support and I really appreciate it. Uh, if you do have the means to support, I know we're all kind of in a, a very tough time. There's a lot of people. There is a lot of people that could use your generosity and support. Um, if, if I'm not your cup of tea, there are several other people. Uh, but if I am your cup of tea... Uh, and you have arrived at this channel and would like to continue seeing videos like this, um, subscribe, like, share. Those are big ways that you can help. Financial contributions, if you can make them, uh, all of them are available on my website at ramennoodlescomedy.com slash donate. Um, Patreon, PayPal, Venmo, Cash App, uh, however you would like to contribute. There, there's also a way that you can directly contribute right onto my website as well. Um, However you would like to contribute, uh, there are various different ways to do that. And I, and I appreciate all of the people that uh, one-time donations, sustaining memberships, whatever it is, fucking uh, you're awesome for doing it, period. Uh, I don't really have any shows that I'm <laughs> – the live events, I can't really fucking tell you because uh, right now it's um, – we're in limbo. We are in limbo. Um, but since these are going to go to daily, uh, uh, I'm going to try to do these daily videos of some kind. I will probably up the production value of it. Um, uh, yeah, a little bit more since I'll have a little bit more time to start working on these. Uh, so, um, yeah, I think that's, that's good. Uh, stay safe out there. Wash your hands. Take care of each other. Um, if you have a friend in need, please reach out to them. This is tough times for everybody. Uh, our, our mental healths are just as much in jeopardy as our physical health are. Um, so, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll check in with you, uh, with you guys uh, regularly. And um, uh, hopefully, you know, we'll, 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 we'll have some nice, meaningful dialogue on this channel. That's, that's my hope. That's, my, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm geared towards. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. I really appreciate it. And uh, hopefully we'll see you on the road. <laughs>